context in the Neil bot. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Frozen oh, Frontier. Uh, there are many out of context quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point? I always enjoy coming back from break and having chat try to figure out what somebody's saying as we're coming live. <laughs> okay, so I, I typoed fear. It says undead and creatures that successfully roll their saving throws, not uh, creatures. So everyone make a saving throw. Yeah, right. So wait, I don't I, think I this is that. one that you can choose to fail. I feel like... It's a natural I mean, reaction. I, I assumed that the saving throw thing was you're making an attempt to resist and a failed saving throws. Like you can fail the save on a fireball by just not trying to dodge the fireball, right? Right, right. I imagine that saving throws were basically like a concerted effort on the part of the character to not succumb to the spell's effects. Uh, yeah. And maybe. Before... I feel like mind affecting spells and physically affecting spells are a little bit different. Like you can stand yeah. in the way of a fireball and let it hit you, but if someone is attacking your mind, I can uh, see that. There might be just an innate reaction to it. Yeah. You know? Like it's unconscious. You don't, it mm -hmm. just kind of happens. Yeah. So everyone okay. give me your fear saves. Uh, is that. Versus spell. Versus spell. So, okay, so D20 greater than 14. Oh no, my cells, my saves are best for success. Pass. Oh, we all pass all right. on the save. All right. Uh, all right you, nothing happens. You feel creepiness from your armor, but it is no match to the fear in front of you, and you guys do not budge. Hmm. So we took like a step up, right? And it was significantly less bad. Yes, um, every time you like so, retreat from it, you feel the sense of relief. Okay, so I have an idea then. Um, how far down does the staircase go? Uh, same height as all the others, it, you know, so that you can have like a 10 foot, eight foot ceiling uh, and still have, you know, some solid ground. So it's maybe 12 or 13 feet below the ground level of the rest of the temple. I mean, so that's how far the staircase goes, like 12 or 13 feet long? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do then, uh, would I be able to just jump so I could jump from a higher upstairs? Because at that point, the fear would not be able to really... I wouldn't have any control over my direction. Yeah, at that so point. You, get, you get back to a place where you can jump, and as you like go to jump, at, just before you throw your, yourself off the staircase, you catch yourself and stop and reconsider your actions. Okay, I have and... another idea here then, and I hope Nick doesn't hate me for this. I, I say, William, I have an idea. Oh yeah, what's up? I turn uh, around right there for a second, and I, I walk a step above you, and I push you down the staircase. <laughs> I'm gonna hope that you tumble down the stairs. Knock it out. All right. Uh, all right. He shoves you down the staircase. Roll me a d6 for the damage he takes while he tumbles <laughs> down the staircase. Shouldn't there be a hit? Don't you instinctively resist the attack? I mean, That's probably, mental, yeah. not physical. Uh, I mean. I, I, I specifically told him to like stand there because Wait, like but I what I try and do is if anyone's ever played the board game Sumo, I try and do the you what and Henry move, which is when he's charging me right. I uh -huh. flip him over me and I try and throw him over my shoulder All down right, the so stairs. So that sounds like there's a contest going on here. So Ferris, give me a roll to hit. Okay. Uh one um, second. And while this contest is going on, Nick, I need you to make me a saving throw versus paralyzation because oh, you're fuck. contesting against Ferris and the that mask he's wearing. I mean, this is so scary down here. <laughs> What's going on with all the scary shit? 20, uh, two in a row. Jesus. Rows. All right, so roll the hit. Um, I'm level six, so plus five. Yeah. Uh, that's a 21, so that's a hit. You easily hit William. Give me a So pose. now it's a contest of strength. Yeah, give me a pose 25. strength checks. Oh. Uh, 37. <laughs> Not budging. So Ferris goes to shove William, and William's like, no. No, I, I, I oh, grab him and to... throw him over my shoulder. All right. That's you right. go to lift him and throw him. Uh, you toss him down the stairs. Roll me a d6 for how much damage you deal to Ferris. Sure. Do I, get a dex save? do I get a dex save for partial damage on that? Do you have a tumbling proficiency? Uh, no, but I do have 17 dex. No, oh. the, without a tumbling proficiency, no save. Ferris, you take four he damage. Could, he could do the, uh, like, half your... Like, he could add half his dex. Uh, sure. Non to yeah, right. if you want it, you can make me a dex save at... What would that be? At half, so, like, a... Uh, eight. At plus eight. eight. Yeah, d20 plus eight. Yeah. Nope. No. Yeah, you take four points of damage as you, like, tumble down the staircase, landing hard, and you come to a, a paralyzed stop 
your heart is beating so quickly. You are a deer in the headlights, like frozen mm-hmm. at the bottom of the staircase, staring down this dark tunnel before you. Very similar to the other feet. tunnels. Yeah. Uh, um, you can see it's, it's a straight passageway with broken debris all over the place. And you think you think you see a person at the end of it. All right, I'm gonna pull out that magnifying glass and I'm gonna I'm gonna look down with no, my 300 feet. You're, you're, you're stuck, you are paralyzed with fear. You are beyond the edge of this, like you cannot pass this fear aura. You've been forcefully pushed past it and mm-hmm. you are like completely frozen and trapped in terror. What's down there, Faris? Faris, what's down there? Ah! <laughs> Is he manages cre- to get his feet underneath him and bolt back up the staircase. That bad, eh? There's something down there. Or oh, some, yeah? There's something down there. Some kind of uh, humanoid shape. Do you want to go and take a look, Yarame? You don't seem to be affected by the magic. Sure, I will go take a look. Be right back, y'all. Oh, uh, I need light source. Wait, wait, wait. I um, You said it's 13 to 14 feet, right? I tie my rope from my harpoon around him. In case I need to drag him up the stairs, and uh, I Grimes, give him the lantern. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, choking on water. Yeah, I uh, spark up the lantern and hand it to your armor. All right, well, let us go. All right, you head on down the stairs uh, into the hallway. You don't see the person Ferris said he saw, uh, and you begin to walk into the crypt. Yarmir disappears from view for all of you at the top of the staircase as the what? rope trails. It's only 20 feet, so... Oh, you you're, you're never going to be able to... You're going to have to let go of the rope for him to get anywhere, really. So uh, when he gets to the base of the stairs, before he goes around the corner, you said the stairs were 13 feet. I say, is there anything down there, Yarmir? I see nothing, no. Here. You feel comfortable taking a look? Yeah, Here, take this. Let's take a look. I, I toss my length of rope down the stairs. Uh, it's fine. I like Tie it to your waist. Do you have your harness on? Oh, uh, no, no, it's too why heavy. Are you, why else why aren't you wearing your harness? <laughs> well, because because otherwise I don't walk very fast. You see, it, it drags I've got 100, me down. Yeah, I've got 100 feet of silk rope, so he can he can drag Yaramir's lifeless corpse up after this shadow mm-hmm. monster eats him. So we so we throw the harness down. If Yaramir's, I mean, I get the feeling that Greg doesn't even, he might just walk I, away. I don't, I don't know if Yaramir, <laughs> do you take these precautions that they're suggesting? Uh, I don't know. I think about it. Armir looks at the harness on the ground and the There's silk no... rope and... Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Yarmir, Yarmir, where are you going? <laughs> I thought about it. Come back, Yarmir. It turns out Yarmir doesn't, doesn't yeah. really have the wisdom. He to... disappears from view for you guys. Uh, just the very soft sounds of his feet. Uh, slowly vanishing into the darkness as your own heartbeats are racing and the blood is pumping in your ears. Uh, so, Yarmir. So, what's down here? Uh, it's a passage, much like the other ones, kind of stone on the walls at first, and you can see a little bit down the way, there's there's some crypty-looking things. Um, but as you approach and walk down, you see a, a vision of a, a woman appear before you. And as it sort of materializes or semi-materializes... Does it look like a ghost? Like, we've seen a million ghosts at this point. This looks at all ghosty. We're blasting it full... No, it, it doesn't look like a ghost. It, okay. looks, it looks like Victoria. Oh, okay. Uh, she appears at maybe 20 feet from you, um, sort of blinking and looking around, um, and then eyes connecting on yours and saying, Yaromir? Vicky, is it is it you? Is it you? Well, I pinch myself. Yeah, I feel pain. I am pretty sure it's me. That's that's definitely. And then she cocks her head to the side and starts to back away from you with a concern on her face. What is wrong? What? What are you? She says, starting to back away a little bit further. I am, I am me. What, what do you mean, what am I? I, can, I have not changed? I can feel your, your hatred. Uh, and you notice her dress is catching fire slightly on the bottom. Oh, um, I immediately put down the portable hole and get the watering can out. 
like as soon as I see fire, I'm like, we gotta yeah. fix. It. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if it takes a round. I don't know how put long. Put it down that to narrative. unfold it. Dig around, find the watering can. Uh, she's backed up, so she's now like 30, 35 feet away from you. And as like, I, I, I hand race up, forward, like Victoria, I will put out fire. Do not worry. I can save you this time. I. I, she she pedals back a little bit more, but you catch up to her, and as you start to pour the watering can on her uh, ghostly visage, she continues saying, I, I can, your anger, your, your fear, there's, there's so many within you. There's such, such turmoil. Uh, it has been a long and hard journey without you. Yeah. You watering can her, and it doesn't seem to affect it, but the water just falls through her her form. Um, Do I have a way to make things ethereal or to bring the etherealness in forward? I immediately seeing this um, attempt to, I just like, I, I, I find something sharp, just like a stone, something. Mm -hmm. um, what do I have? I have my med kit out and I find like a small scalpel and just like slash my, my hand and mm -hmm painting and blood the uh symbol for displaced self on the can uh, in an attempt to infuse it with the ability to touch this ghostly figure and put out the flames Ooh. okay uh so you displace yourself right because it can't be target it can't be cast on well i'm, I'm paint, like i have the watering can and i like i'm like painting this this arcane symbol on the can as it mm -hmm. as it pours its liquid Right. So you're painting with your blood on this can while she's standing before you, slightly on fire, uh, and says, y Yaramir, what, what are you doing? I have grown in strength. I have learned secrets of universe. Shush, I, I, will, I will explain later when you are not burning to death. I'm fine. I'm not, what are you? She looks down, doesn't seem to really notice the flames licking at her. Uh, your can begins to sort of like flicker and vibrate within your hands. You say you are fine, but I, I see you burning. And I what see is... you, all, all of you. So, so much, so many. But mm. it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what you are. I'll, I'll always love you, Yaramir. And I you. You notice the flames are beginning to lick up her more and more, but she doesn't seem to notice, although you can feel the heat coming from it. Um, I guess I put down the watering can then, seeing as that's not going to happen. Um, and I just kind of, I don't know. She's backed up in this corner. Can I just, like, sit with her? Yeah. Um, I was like, I was like, come, let us, tell me, what, what, what have you been up to since we parted? I, like, go to put my arm around her and, like, find a, a, a seat somewhere. Maybe just on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's been... I don't... Can I touch her? You can, yeah, you reach out to her and there, you come to a stop. You can't feel her flesh, but you, you can touch, like, a, a wall of force or something as if it were her. You know, you can interact with her, sort of, but not quite really feel her. Um, but as you touch her, the flames race up her and spread from her to you. Um, you don't really feel it, but you notice your clothes, your your robes are beginning to char and burn around you. And she I says, think "I'm okay with this. Like, if it doesn't hurt, like I don't think I need to like try to bear it or to save again, like to 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 continue. So like, I just let it happen." Yeah. She says to you, "Find your peace." my love. Do what needs to be done. Only then will we be able to be together again. Hmm. I, I wish I knew what that was. I you'll fear... find it. You'll, you know, I you have know what you mean. Heart. Remember all the times that we tried to find purpose or reason behind images on body. You're closer I, than it... ever. I know it. Well, and when you, when you figure it out, we'll, we can be together again. Good. I, that is what I wish. Uh, she's basically totally enveloped in flame at this point, and the bottom part of her is vanishing. It's slowly like the, 
the part of hers that full is fully charred is disappearing and that is rising up her body. I I think I think that instills like a panic in in Yaramir. Like he doesn't know he doesn't know what to do. And he wants to like prevent it, but it, it just like rises up in him as it's just like unknown like just fear he's he's gripped with fear more so than than ever right just just that he paralyzed essentially i think maybe he just silently weeps as he watches his wife burn for a second time I, only this time he gets to see it actually happen you can hear the the echoing trailing of her voice as she says i, I love you i love all of you welcome home uh and just sort of vanishes before you I think I just sit there for a while, right? I think I think Yaramir is close to a broken man at that point. Um, he just he needs a a period of time to to put steel back in his body, and he's been robbed of a, of whatever it takes to to move or to to you know keep adventuring. Mm -hmm. He's he fears that. As close as he's become, right? He he's all he's solved all but a few of the mysteries on his body, and yet is no closer to some great truth. And like this, just reminds him of that, right? And and he sees his wife burn in front of his eyes, uh, and loses her a second time. And I just think it, I think it's a, a moment where he just crumbles into like nothingness like it's not even really a human being there it's just a shell for a while mm -hmm. and i think it takes him i think it takes him a, a good like an, an alarming amount of time maybe for the people up at the top of the stairs until he can like gather himself back up and just like silently walk back up the, the stairs and out the temple sure um as you you go to stand uh, you catch your a look of your surrounding as you're about to walk out, and you notice maybe another 15 feet. It must have been right behind the apparition of your wife. Uh, there is a a man standing there, um, frozen. You know, totally frozen, like the other people you found in dungeons, naked, with his arms outstretched towards you, uh, and a, some sort of folded fabric over his arms. Do I recognize him in any way? You do not. But you also yeah. recognize that as although you've never you didn't burn, your clothes are charred and burned off of you. They're just like okay. little scraps of burnt fabric. Clothes. That actually yeah. helps my weight problem a lot, although I have no warmth. Um, okay. So no clothes. Did I lose any of my like what what did I lose on my Your person? robes. Okay. So um, I guess I your spell I components are like I on the ground in pouches. My spell components that could burn. Uh, no, the, the bags around you did not burn, just the fabric of the robe itself. Uh, so okay. maybe if there's something in the pockets of the robe, that would probably be damaged, but separate bags on you are not damaged. So what wouldn't be in a bag, I guess? I guess the poison darts wouldn't necessarily be in a bag. So I can lose, I lose those. You just have poison darts sitting loosely in your pocket? I imagine. I mean, how else would you carry them? <laughs> in a bandolier or something? Or a pincushion? <laughs> Not in your uh, pocket uh, to get scalps burn? Uh, I don't, maybe? Probably not well. Probably not well enough to go up with this, but maybe any hair that was on the scalp is singed and burned off. You know, they're probably like uh, hairless scalps now. Okay. I think most of what I have is either like things like powder or or like g g dried grasshopper legs. Which you wouldn't just carry around loose, right? Like most right. of the stuff. They vials. probably all have their own bags. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else that burns? What do I have loose? Mm, oh, <laughs> uh, it would be funny if my bag of ancient hookah burned. I think we're good. So I guess I find a little like leather loop right from my my spell casting, and I untie them and kind of make a little string, mm -hmm. and uh, put the the amulet around my neck. 
sit because it usually rests in my pocket. Right. Um, so I just I spend some time to do that. Um, maybe I give a glance to this person in in frozen robes, but Yarmir is no not interested in in this uh, person at this point. Right. Yeah. Like the maybe person... another time. He's yeah. holding the robes, right? Like he's, he's not wearing them. Yeah. He's holding them. Yeah, and, and they're not frozen along with it. It's like literally just robes draped over a frozen body. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're Maybe outstretched as if he was like in the middle of presenting the robes when he was frozen. Uh, but the robes don't appear to be frozen themselves. I think I think that th- th- that might be something that like subconsciously Aramir understands. But I think he just kind of glanced at this person, like half expecting to see like someone from his hometown or someone important, and realizing that it is not just kind of puts the steel back in his body and slowly ascends the the staircase. Uh, You guys are at the top of the stairs. Yarmir's been gone, and it's been quiet for 15, maybe 20 minutes now, uh, when he comes out naked, except for, like, a belt with all of his pouches hanging off of it. But... Naked now. What happened down there? Um, Where are your clothes? It looks like you might have been scared right out of your clothes. The lantern, and I say... Perhaps it is for the best that you are not allowed down there. And I just kind of like go walk into the temple proper. Is the fear aura still emanating? Uh, Only whenever you try and head downstairs or think about heading downstairs. (laughs) What, What does he mean? I say to the other two. I don't know. Ask him. Is it, no possible that whatever is, is it possible whatever's down there infected Yarmir? Are we so sure that's Yarmir that came out? Grimes, I think you would make a fantastic conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> he says from behind his, like, mask of terror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this demonic face saying, there's nothing wrong. Don't even worry about it. Um, it's not nothing in these crypts that could change who you are. Uh, I don't know, Grimes. I don't know. He had an odd look in his eye. Didn't look like Yaramir. Odder than usual? Maybe. Well, I guess let's get out of here. This place gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right. You go back to the temple. I'm going to go get Yaramir. Right, because you walked into the main bit of the temple, right, Greg? Yeah. Yeah. This is like a catacomb or dungeon, right? I just walked into, like, the main bit of the temple. Can, can you find some clothes for him? He's not gonna last long out there naked. Yeah, yeah. Leave, leave it to me. I um, I let I let them leave, and then I'll take my my cloak off my back. Mm. And if Yaramir is at like one of the, I don't know. What, what are you doing, Yaramir? Um, I'm I probably find like a blank bit of wall if that's possible in a temple. I know that they're probably filled with like art or sculpture or like. You can find the blankest wall. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I I find that small mirror and just kind of position it underneath the um, stone slab. And I arrive, I put my hand over the the uh, the little bit of scalp flesh that magically enhances the, the image and I call my daughter's name. And then I cast continual light on the back of it and use the mirror to like project it up onto the wall the reflection of this face that appears underneath. And I think you just see uh, Yaramir just kind of like staring at this reflection of a, of a young girl's face. Do I see the reflection of the young girl? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's literally a mirror, like it, in the stone tablet itself on the bottom is this face that appears when you call out to it. And then when you... I'm just using continual light as a means to reflect that image off this mirror. So I think I don't want to ask too many questions. I, I slowly walk up behind you and I drape my um, my cloak over your shoulders and say, uh, Yarami, we're, we're heading back to the to camp if you want to come. Sure. I I will be there in time. Uh, you... You shouldn't go alone. I'll, I'll wait for you. And I, I go and I go and sit in front. Is there a statue? Is there a Bellum statue? A Velthara statue? Oh yeah, it's Velthara's temple, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to pray to Velthara. I go and is there like a a neutral 
Alta, maybe, or something like that. You the, know, some the that's... temple of to all the gods in the middle of town. No, I mean, a... in, in, I want to wait for Yaramir in here before leaving. Is there anywhere I can pray to Balin that's not weird? Uh, if, if, I don't know. I'll just go to it. I'll just kind of do what he's doing then and kneel down in front of a wall. And so, is this not a? In in past, we've seen temples where all of the gods are represented. Even if it was like a temple to Valthara, it would be themed Valthara. Maybe she has the biggest shrine. But is there not small shrines the other gods here? No, not in this place. This one is okay. primarily is just to Valthara. Okay, so that's kind of unique then. That's not something you would see outside of Arcadia. Definitely no. Or, I mean, that's not something you would see in Arcadia. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. um, what what's Bellum's sigil? Uh. Bellum's sigil are cro uh, a crossed spear and arrow. So I try and I find a blank bit of wall, and with my dagger, I try and draw the symbol in the wall, and then I just pray there until Yaramir is ready to go. Uh, are you desecrating a temple of Belthara? <laughs> I guess I am, yeah. <laughs> but reconsecrating it yeah. afterwards. Um, I'm sorry. Are you are you offending the god of vengeance right now? Uh, we forgot a war. It's a good. It's a good. There's literally a Bellum temple like half a mile that half a mile down the street. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I step out of the temple and I think I wait out in the snow. I thought you two had already left. Yeah, I think we both think so. went out. I think, I think we all we're all heading back to the time. thing. He said to go back, right? And then and then he was gonna take care of the Yeah. yeah. So I think Ferris will just head back. So I wait for Yara to Have we ready. searched this whole town? Did we get to the Temple of Quintarius? Yes. Down by the docks? Yes. Yeah, this is it now, yeah. In the Colosseum, there wasn't anything to do as far as we could gather, right? There was yeah, no... it was just an empty, abandoned Colosseum. Well. I think after some time, um, William is sitting here in the temple, and Yaramir eventually just kind of looks up and tearfully speaks a, a prayer in, in Matavan, um, which just kind of is generic. It, it simply is a, a prayer to the to the dead, um, a prayer of greeting and sorrow for lost love, um, but is, is really a personal thing. It doesn't need to be directly translated. Um, and he kind of looks to, to William and and takes off this this necklace and kind of offers it out to him. He says, I believe there was more down there. Uh, I saw at least uh, an offering of some kind. Perhaps this is, uh, perhaps these uh, are things that would help the expedition. I never wish to go down again, but I will wait for you if you wish to use this to go down. Uh, I think perhaps Tempos might grant you access to the inner workings of the chamber. There was no undead there? No, well... <laughs> there were spirits there, but none that would cause you harm, I promise. I understand. Well, uh, wait here for me. I'll see if it works. I, I put the amulet over my neck and try and walk to the stairs. Uh, you, the fear is still there. Absolutely. Okay. Let's take a step back. Uh, taking the amulet off my neck, turn to Yaramir and hand it back to him. It's not this. Perhaps you were the only one meant to go down there. You, you said there's stuff down there to help the expedition. Maybe. I do not know. There is definitely things that could be taken. Um, let us return on the morrow. I, I will not go down this night. I'm not. All right, let's, uh, let's head back. I'm sure Faris is cooking up our rations. Hopefully just our Russians. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Ferris is actually making like, he's got like spices and stuff that he usually keeps in the cooking pot. And I think he's going a little bit above, like Yarmir looked pretty, uh, not maybe not decimated, but I mean, you know, Grimes was talking about, it. he had the, the wrong kind of look in his eye. I think Ferris is probably trying to make some sort of pick me up meal, something a little bit nicer than what we usually have. Comfort food, elevated yeah. blush. Cool. Yeah, that goulash. Nice. All I right. So I, I walk back with Yarmir. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'll ask a couple of questions. You know, like as we're walking back, um, I sort of broach the subject of what he saw down there. But if, if you don't want to talk about it, so I guess I'll say, um, so spirits, people from your past. 
Ah, uh, yes. Uh, more, more than spirits from the past. Uh, I saw my family for the first time in many years. I, I haven't seen my family for years now either. It's. Mm, I'm sure. I'm sure they're waiting for you, you, my friend. Oh, they are in Matava. No longer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Yeremia. Mm. You know, um, if you need to talk, well, uh, you can talk to me. I appreciate that. It is. It is nice knowing to her. You have a family man uh, with you here. This place is cold and dark. You sometimes forget yourself. N not you, William, but oneself. It's easy to lose oneself in the uh, the echoes of the past. But um, without you here in full spirit and mind, uh, I believe we'd all be dead. So it's, it's part of my duty to make sure that you're feeling up to scratch. Mm -hmm. And I give him a, like a hard like slap on the back with that, and then I tell like a I, I can't Probably think of one sending him toppling right. This is like a frail old man, Got like a fracture in his shoulder. He's not now. really that old. He's only like thirty one, but he's he's emaciated, right? He's this like tiny tiny person. <laughs> you yeah. give him a hard slap, mm -hmm. he's gonna go. And then I um I, I I don't know any, but I tell some sort of like rude joke that I would usually tell in the barracks with the the men to try and lighten the mood, you know, something about like. <laughs> The soldier with a, you know, fifty-inch dick or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, climbed up the key, climbed up the tower, and like, fucked the princess from the window. <laughs> something like that. I don't know. He had to tie it to his leg while he was going up the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Yarmir just kind of like Did he appreciates the gesture. Uh, it gives you like a, a, a wry smile about your Magnum Duck uh, story <laughs> and just kind of. Yeah, I leave the. Um, ignores oh it. Oh my god. I leave the. Um, what's the word? The name of the, the person in the story blank, but I sort of. You know, he had a beard. He was from a noble family. <laughs> <laughs> Did he use this like this fifty-inch penis to as like a climbing rope to get up the wall in the first place? Yeah, like maybe not at first, but I've told it so many times now that it's it's just got more and more ridiculous every time I tell it. Mm -hmm. I only use it in these situations, right? When somebody's like best friends died in battle or. <laughs> like tell you about the soldier with the magnum dong. <laughs> That's the comforting the soldier with the dead friend joke. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That's such a thing. That's what. That's as far as my. 11 Christmas right there. 12, yeah. 12 Christmas. No. Okay, and then um, I lead us back to the temple. Oh. Hopefully, to the smell of food and a warm fire. All right. Uh, well, you're all back there, waiting together. And I, yeah, I try and keep the mood light. I, I, I regale the group with what stories I've got. And I encourage Grimes to tell some stories about spying on princesses. Through that window. I've, I've got a great one about a big dicked climber. <laughs> 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 All right, why don't we get a break and we'll come back on the next day, the 14th of April, 1511, and we'll see you then. Bye. Okay. No, no. A big dick story really pierces the mood.